Okay, so the first question is a subtraction question, but if you like to, you can change that to a addition if it makes you more comfortable. So I'm going to do that, and you have 74. Now change the subtraction to an addition, and we're going to take the opposite of this, which is positive 64, and now this just becomes a simple addition problem. 74, 64, which is 8, 148. And that's your first question. Second one. So you're looking for situations that lead to zero, right? So take a look at the first one. You're going up 24 floors. So imagine you're here at the ground level and you go up 24 floors. And if you go back 27 floors, will you go back to zero? No, that's out. The temperature is 8 degrees. So again, use number lines. They're not there to help you. So if you're 8 degrees, and then it increases by 9, you're going to go up, right? Will you go back to 0? No, you won't. So that's also gone. Getting 80% of the test. So if you got 80% of the test and then doing test corrections to get half the points back, would that give you back to 0? That's also a no. Last one, spending 4500 on renovating the bathroom. So you really, you're down 4500 right? And then winning 4500 on a lotto ticket. That should even things out, right? So the only one that leads you to zero is the last one. <clears throat> Put the following integers on the lum la lumber number line from least to greatest. So again, number nine, number line helps. And I don't need too many positives, so I can put a zero over here because I don't need too much space for the positives. And the only positive number I have is 12. So let me cross that out and make believe that's a 12. Remember, you're starting from zero, so the first one is negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, and you can continue to the left. So as you go, you hit negative five. Keep going, keep going, keep going. You're going to hit 30, 35, 30. Please pardon this interruption. Mr. Gomez, please call the main office. Mr. Gomez, please call the main office. Thank you. Negative 38, negative 39, and negative 40. So if you were to order from least to greatest, and remember, the number to the left is always smaller, and the number to the right is always bigger. So in order, that's already negative 40, negative 39, negative 38, negative 5, and 12. As you can tell, the number to the left is always a smaller one, and the number to the right is always a bigger. 12 is bigger than negative 5, negative 5 is bigger than negative 38, negative 38 is bigger than negative 39, negative 39 is bigger than negative 40. Okay, so the number on the right is always the bigger one. <laughs> So we're looking at which of these four, so another way of writing this, negative 15 is greater than which of these following answers? Well, I'm going to have to do one by one. So let's take the first one. Negative 34 plus 12, well, if you make zero pairs, you're going to have a bunch of zero pairs and some negative leftovers, right? And you're going to have, you're going to have about negative 22 left over. Negative 8 and minus negative 7, if you do negative 8 plus negative 7, you have two negatives getting... So you know your answer is going to be negative, right? So you're just going to add a bunch of negatives. It's going to be negative 15. Negative 24 minus 31. Again, you can do that. So it becomes negative 24 plus negative 31. Again, you can't make zero pairs, so you're going to add, end up with a, just a larger number of negatives. So if you get 55. Negative 7 and negative 9, again, no uh, zero pairs, so you're just, again, combining everything, and you're going to get negative 16. So negative 15 is bigger than which of these numbers? So let's put them all here. Right? And in this case, negative 15 is greater than this one, this one, and this one, but not this one because they're the same. And if you, again, if you put them on number line, let me make that 0. Negative 15 is over here. Negative 22 is over here. Uh, negative 6. Let me just redo this again. Sorry. So that's negative 15. Right? Negative 16 is going to be right next to it. Negative 22 somewhere over here. And negative 55 somewhere over here. So remember what I told you before? The number on the right is always the bigger. So it's 15 on the right of every of these numbers. 15. Is bigger than negative 16 because it's on the right. Negative 15 and negative 22, who's bigger? Negative 15. And negative 15 and negative 55, who's bigger? Negative 15 because, again, it's, it's on the right side. So it's bigger than this, bigger than this, 
and bigger than this. So the more right you are, the bigger the number you are. And the more left you are, the smaller your value is. Okay, I'm only on number five. Uh, what integers when divided gives you a positive quotient? So what can I divide? What kind of integers can I divide so I get a positive quotient? Well, I can divide a positive, divided by a positive. That gives me positive. Another thing I can divide is a negative divided by a negative, that's also going to give me a positive. So if the signs are the same, it gives me positive, right? Um, so those two situations. Find the difference. Now, I don't know how many of you are comfortable doing it this way. If you're not, please change it to an addition problem. It makes life a little bit easier. Negative 29, change the subtraction to addition. Change the negative 17 to opposite. So I have these two, I can make some zero pairs. I'm gonna have more negative leftovers. So how many negative leftovers gonna be? It's gonna be the difference between 29 and 17. That's going to give me uh, nine minus seven is two, two minus one is two. So I'm gonna have negative 12 leftover. Seven, which one has the least value? So I'm gonna have to actually evaluate these, right? So. Let's calculate negative 2 and negative 23. They're both negative, no zero pairs, so it becomes just a larger number of negatives, so negative 25. Negative 21 minus 26, I'm going to do this. I make zero pairs. I'm going to have some negatives, a lot of negative left over, and it's going to be negative 25 left over. Negative 17 plus negative 33, no zero pairs I can make, so I could, I'm going to add these two numbers, so I'm going to get uh, negative uh, 60. 40, 50, yeah, negative 50. This one, zero pairs. I'm gonna have some negatives left over, right? So 62 and 33, 12 is nine, five minus three, so I'm gonna have a bunch of negative leftovers after I make zero pairs. So which one has the least value? So who is furthest to the left of all these four numbers? It would be negative 50. So next one, represent us. So I want this situation represented using addition. So I have one, two, three situations. So I'm gonna put it like that, right? So I'm using addition to represent the situation. So negative 25, Sam lost, so that's negative 25. That's the first thing that happened. Plus, what's the second thing that happened? He lost $9, so I'm gonna put that. And then he lost again, and I'm going to write it. Right. So this situation represents as a, as a sum is negative 25 plus negative 9 plus negative 30. Um, represent that as a decimal. Sorry, it's my cat. I have a very dumb cat that's walking around my house breaking things. Okay, my cat's a little bit dumb. So don't. <clears throat> 7 divided by 15, no it can't go, so add a 0, 7, 15 goes to 70, 6 times, 4 times, 5 times, no, 4 times, it's going to be 60, 10 left over, bring a 0 down, uh, 6, yeah that's going to work, 4 times 15 is 30, get like 3, that's 90, 10 left over, bring another zero down, and you can tell that's going to be 4666 six, six, forever and ever and ever. And we can write that as 0 0.46 with a bar notation like that. Okay? <clears throat> uh, next one, divide is a negative divided by a positive, so I know my answer is negative. And 85 divided by 15 by 5, so it's going to be 1, 5, 3, 5, 17, so it's going to be negative 17. Take a look, okay, so here, first thing I do is a parenthesis, so negative 9 to second power is negative 9 times negative 9, which is a negative times a negative, which gives me 81, minus 2, Let's take care of inside the parentheses. Negative 8 plus 3, I can make some zero pairs. That's some negative left over, right? Some more negative left over, so it's going to be negative 5. 
Now I have a choice between subtraction here and multiplication, so I should do the multiplication first. So let's leave the 81 by itself, the subtraction sign here, and let's multiply 2 times negative 5. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. I can now subtract. I'm going to do 81 plus the opposite of negative 10, which is 10. And that becomes a simple addition problem, which is 91. Um, another evaluate here. So between multiplication and division, I do it from left to right. Okay, so whoever comes first. Oh, I skipped one. I'll go back to that one. Negative 5 times 6 is negative 30. And negative 30 divided by negative 10 is a negative divided by a negative. So my, I know my answer is positive. And 30 divided by 10 is 3. Let me go back to the one I skipped. Which one has the greatest value? Oof. This is negative 18. This is negative uh, 18 again. I don't know why. This is negative 20. And this is negative 4. Right? So they're all different signs, so I know they're all negative. So which one has the greatest value? The greatest value is the number that's furthest to the right, on the right side. So right, so whoever is more on that direction. So if this is 0, that would be negative 4 negative 18, negative 20. Not closer to 0, but just to the right. So whoever's on the right side always wins. So the number furthest to the right is negative 4, and that makes it your bigger number. Fourteen. So, here you are. Underwater, you're negative 12 feet underwater, right? That's zero. And then top of the building is 245 feet, so let me make a building here. And that's 245 feet. So what's the distance from you all the way to the top? So you want to measure that distance. So which of these three, four expressions will give you the distance? Well, if you look at the first one, this is a negative minus a negative. That's not going to give you. First of all, this is going to be positive, right? So you're going to mess. So how? But, well, well, let's just do this. From wherever this diver is to the water is 12 feet. From zero to the top of that building is 245. So the distance is those two numbers added together. So 245 plus 12 is going to give you 257. So I know my answer, and it's, we're talking about distance, right? So distance can't be negative. So the distance is going to be 257. So you're looking for an expression that's going to give you a total of 257. Well, this one's definitely not going to give you 257. This one, absolute value of negative 12 is 12. And then I subtract 245. That's going to give you 257? No. Throw in the garbage. Let me do this one. Negative 12 minus the absolute value of negative 245. The absolute value of 245 is just 245. Does this look like it's going to give you a positive 257? No. Let's figure out why this is your answer. So let me erase every. Well, let me. Just, so inside the this the, uh, inside the absolute value sign, you have an operation to do. Don't take the absolute value yet. Find this out. So you got negative twelve, and I'm going to change that to an addition problem, right? And I keep all this between absolute values. Now it's a negative plus a negative, right? So no zero pairs. It's just I'm just going to add those two numbers, and I get 257 negative, right? So I know my answer is now. It's going to be 257. And now I'm ready to take the absolute value. What's the absolute value of negative 257? 257. So that, sorry, absolute value of negative 257 is 257. And there's my answer. So the only one that's going to leave me to the, dense, to the distance that and the answer that we found before, which is 257, is this third expression. 15. Talking about a skier. So he's on top of the mountain, and every six seconds he goes, um, he goes six feet, right? He descends six feet. So what's change in elevation after one minute. So if it's on top of the mountain and he's near 
and he's skiing, obviously the elevation is going to be decreasing, right? So in one minute, there's 60 seconds, and if I multiply by 6, I get 0, 360, so 360, negative 360 feet, right? So wherever he was, he's now going to be 360 feet below that, okay? Next question. Fifteen. So if I owe the bank one hundred twenty dollars, that means that my current status is this. Yeah. And if I borrow money, twelve coffees, to buy twelve coffees at dollar twenty-five each, I'm still gonna be more. I'm going to owe more, right? So I don't even have money to buy coffee, so I borrowed some uh, some money to borrow coffee. So let's see how much I bought. 125 times 12. There's two decimal numbers here, no decimal numbers here, so I have a total of two decimal places, which my answer should also have. So this is going to be 250, a 0, 125, 0, 10, 5, 1, two decimal places, 15. So 12 cups of coffee is going to cost me $15. So, I already owe the bank 120 which is negative 20 cents. So I'm going to add what? Another, more debt on top of it. So, I owed 120 before, now I'm going to owe a little bit more, and I'm going to owe $135. Okay. 17. Clark, park this car. So, again, the number line always, or it's something. A little diagram always helps. That's a zero. He parked on the seventh floor under, and he's going to go up 19 floors. So where would he end up? Well, there's my dumb cat again. Maybe my cat needs to lose weight a little bit because he can't jump from place to place. He keeps falling down. So, <clears throat> to go up from here, from the negative seventh underground to zero, I already I have to go seven floors, right? But I need to go up a total of 19. So if I already went up seven, how much more left I have? I have 12 more floors to go. So Clark works on the 12th floor, right? So on the 12th floor, at lunch he goes down. So he's on the 12th. At lunch he goes down eight to meet his girlfriend. So if you're on the 12th and you go down eight, you're obviously now 12 minus 8, you're obviously somewhere on the fourth floor. So he picks up his girlfriend, and then from the fourth floor, he's going to go down six more floors. Well, from four to zero is four floors, and then he has to go two more because he has to go a total of six, right? So from four to zero, he goes down four, and then he needs to go two more, one, two, and he's going to end up on the neg negative second floor. On the ground. So where, on what floor are the restaurants? Maybe it's one of those restaurants that has basement restaurants. One of those buildings that have basement restaurants. So he, the restaurants would be on the negative second floor. Um, so, and this Death Valley, which is, I believe, in not California, Arizona, uh, Nevada, one of those three states. And it's 286 feet underground. Mount Rushmore, that's the mountain with all the present faces. Its highest elevation is 5,725. So how spread up, how far apart are these two places? Well, again, this is, you can know that from here, from lowest level of Death Valley to zero is 286 feet. From zero to the top of Mount Rushmore is 5,725 feet. And you would obviously add these two. Okay. Uh, you get one, carry one, zero, carry one. So from the bottom of Death Valley to the top of Mount Rushmore is 6,011 feet. Um, Last question, Carlos is playing a video game, 
His character had an energy level of 3,000. I just made this question up, by the way. Um, so he's at 3,000, right? For the next 15 seconds, he was attacked by a large group of monsters, and his energy level dropped to zero. So he pretty much, I think, died. Um, what was the change in energy at each? What was the change in energy level each second? So he's taking hits, right? He's being attacked. Um, so every second he got, he lost how many points? I guess that's what the point, uh, point here is. So three thousand. And if you divide this by 15, we can find out how many points you lost every second. So take that. I don't know what it is. Uh, 2, 30, and then bring a 0 down. 15 going to 0, 0 times. 15 going to 0, 0 times. So 15 to 200. So every second, right, he lost. He was getting hit. He was losing 200 points of his character life. Okay? Um, That seems to be the end. Here is your bonus word. Get away from me. Hi. And I'm. Um, <laughs>